Hello, and welcome to Tech to Tech presented by Kaizen, where we will explore common cleaning questions and answers. Let's get started. I'd like to introduce Kaizen's own Scott Kane. Thank you, William. And thank you to each of you who have taken a few minutes of your time to hang out with the, the Kaizen team and, and on the latest installment of Tech to Tech. So today we're going to be doing a case study on copper pillar flip chip cleaning. Kind of what happens when we're introducing a new application and evaluating different chemistries for that. My name is Scott Kane. I will be presenting this. Um, my colleague Jason Chan and I work together on this presentation. So let's take a quick overview of what was going on. So we have a memory device OSAT, and just in case you're unaware, OSAT stands for Outsource Semiconductor Assembly and Test. And they were introducing a new production line. The line was to is to utilize the copper flip chip technology to replace the traditional wire bond manufacturing. Um, and we'll get into that in a minute in terms of what the differences are. But the customer was having a new project and needed to evaluate the comparison of our material versus a low cost local supplier. The, in the past application with the wire bond manufacturing, they were able to use a lower cost local supplier and that worked fine. But once they were having to move to the, the flip chip technology, then they determined that they need to evaluate different chemistries for that. So why did the customer make the change? Wirebond has historically been the solution for memory devices such as this. Well, what they found out is for greater capability and faster DRAM, and DRAM is just dynamic random access memory, as that is increased, customers are having to evaluate implementation of different types of packaging and moving to the flip chip BGA. BGA just stands for ball grid assembly in case you weren't aware. And when this happens, there's a lot of things that have to be evaluated. You know, what's the, when we change the chemistry, what happens? Is there partial cleaning? Is there metal compatibility, residual contamination, as well as what's the cost of the machine, et cetera, et cetera, that has to be implemented for this. So it's not just flipping a switch and you know, telling the machine, hey, now we want to do flip shipping compared to the wire bond. So what are some of the challenges that we're going to have to work through with this testing? One thing is because these die chips are very thin and very fragile, we need to be careful with the spray pressure. If we get the pressure too high, the die might crack or there may be peeling, which of course is affecting the integrity of the product. There's not enough clearance there. Look, we're talking about some pretty low standoffs. We have to make sure that there's enough time in each of these processes to get the chemistry under the component and get where we wanna clean out, and then enough time in the rinse to get the chemistry back out of there. And then what about the, the metal compatibility? If a material, if, if a part is sitting in the chemistry for too long, that can have an effect again on the integrity of the part. And what happens when that metal compatibility issues go up? So let's take a look at the trial parameters that we were doing with this. Uh, some of the things to notice is we were running at 65 degrees. This is with the Micronox MX2708. Concentration is 7%, but the real thing to notice here is our belt speed. We we're running that at 10 centimeters per minute. That's pretty slow, but that allows us enough dwell time for the wash and the rinse to really get under there and then really be able to be extracted out of there. And keep in mind, because this is an inline application, when you're moving 10 centimeters per minute through the cleaning, that's going to stay the same through the rinsing and the drying process because it's all on one conveyor. So if we look at what the competitor did here, you know, you can see on the left hand side of this picture on the on the Picture on the left, on the right hand side, you can see a lot of contamination there. You can see the, the module on the right also is not completely clean. Look, they tried this lower cost provider and they worked on some of the other applications that they were doing. But once this new application was implemented, they noticed that the lower cost chemistry provider didn't work. So the results were unacceptable. So that's when they came to us and said, hey, what do you guys have? So what's the Kaizen solution? You know, one of the things that we do is we look at all the different fluxes that are out there. We run testing with that, and then it allows us to quickly come up with a solution as to which chemistry is going to be the best to initially run those trials with due to the extensive library of information we have about this. So we decided to go with the Micronox 2708. 
it's got a really low surface tension. And so what that's helpful for is to get under those parts that we're talking about. And you can say it's also got, uh, it's effective on a number of different metals, which was really important to this customer because this part had a, a, a combination of metals on it. So let's look at the, the results once we introduced the Kaizen Micronox 2708 into the application. You can see what it looked like before and after we cleaned it, and then the competitor, and when we cleaned those same parts on the bottom. Obviously, the Kaizen chemistry blew it away, and the customer is really satisfied with that. So the results and conclusions from this. There's cleaning limitations by product features, and the trial showed that the Micronox can remove the flux residue completely within a reasonable wash time. Yes, we talked about that the wash time was a little bit longer, but once we had the conversation with the customer and explained, here's what has to happen for this to work. This is why other chemistries might not be working and how the water works and chemistry and pulling out and so on and so forth. Customer understood that that's what the wash time needed to be and was able to put it into production. The trial results show that it's completely compatible with the aluminum pads as well as the copper pillar pumps. And that allowed them to know that we've got material compatibility. They know they can come to us if they have other questions about different materials. And what Kaizen does best is we work the entire process. We figure out what the chemistry is, but then we can come in and talk about what we need to do with the machine, how we're testing the chemistry concentration, all the things that go in instead of just handing you a barrel of chemistry. So a couple of things along those lines. We're here to help. We work with a lot of the machine companies in this avenue. Um, we're both really knowledgeable on all aspects of the cleaning process. You guys have a lot of stuff on your plate. And so we can kind of be an extension to your engineering department with having to assist with any of your cleaning issues. You can send parts to our lab, we can clean them and then send them back to you. And now you can have an idea is instead of having to implement something blindly or run a bunch of testing that you don't have the capital for, we can handle all of that. And by the way, we love talking about this stuff. So you're never gonna bother us if you wanna give us a call and talk through this. Uh, just a couple of frequently asked questions that we get. You know, if the capacity of the DRAM parts is increased with the flip chip, then is it safe to assume that this process will be the standard moving forward? And, and the the answer is yes and no. Um, the There's a lot of things to take into consideration if we're going to implement the flip chip. There's a lot of cost. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of research that has to be done on the front portion, different machines, so on and so forth. So the what's the value of the capacity increase compared to what's the cost and what's the long term production plan on that? What is the traditional time frame required for Kaizen to run a test like this? Uh, usually it's two weeks after we've received the parts or after we've um, kind of walked through the process. It's historically two weeks and you'll get a report back with pictures and then the parts sent back to yourself. And if I'm working with a unique combination of materials, what can be done to make sure the chemistry will not create any issues? Whenever we do a lot of this compatibility stuff, we look at a lot of different metals and different uh, thermoplastics and so on and so forth that may be in the application. A lot of times we'll already have that information and that can be requested from your local Kaizen personnel. If not, it's something that we can also run at our lab and provide a really solid foundation of what materials will be of concern, what materials we feel confident we can go through the process with. So with that, I will send it back to William and thank you for your time. Thank you, Scott. Thank you all for watching this Tech to Tech session. If you'd like to discuss this topic further or have any questions not answered in the session, please contact your local Kaizen Regional Manager or send an email to tech, the number two, tech, at kaizen.com, and we will have someone follow up with you as soon as possible. To download the case study this session was based on, click the link in the description. Do you want to have exclusive access to future content sent directly to your inbox, or do you know someone who would benefit from these sessions? If the answer is yes, just go to tech to tech by and fill out the subscription form. And if you like this video, be sure to follow us on our social media platforms for more expert cleaning content. <music>